Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm gonna kick this video off with discussion of NVIDIA. Actually, there's several things going on in the land of NVIDIA, but the first I really wanna discuss could actually be good news for gamers, and that is that the company are actually looking again into the production of mining-focused graphics cards. This is actually coming from Colette Kress, who is the company's CFO, Chief Financial Officer. So why is this good news for gamers? I mean, doesn't this take away production of hardware for gamers? Well, on the surface, yes. But remember, a CMP, which is what NVIDIA are calling a mining-focused GPU, doesn't need certain uh, attributes like, for example, TMUs or ROPs, for example, which a mining-focused card actually would utilize. So it's possible that with this route, NVIDIA could simply reuse dyes which are damaged during the production of, let's say, an RTX 3080 or a 3090, and let's say a set of TM used or um, ROPs or whatever was damaged, that's fine, that's absolutely okay, as long as uh, obviously the shaders and the rest of the components are working, like it can't be too many damaged memory controllers, for example, and then they can simply use those dies, sell them cheaper to uh, a miner, because you don't even need display outputs, of course, and this could, assuming it all goes to plan, which ooh, hardware launches haven't exactly been super smooth, they're more like this at the moment, uh, so if all of this goes to plan, it could be kind of a win for gamers because it might help to alleviate some of the shortages. The only issue, of course, with this is it may not do that at all. And you may still have people just grabbing all of those cards plus the gaming cards. And while I do grant you that this is still a very much a possibility, in fact, I suspect a number of miners won't care, they'll just be happy for the additional supply and they'll still be grabbing it, especially with what's happening with Ethereum pricing at the moment. But at least it's better than nothing. Like having additional supply is always, you know, a good thing. And again, I know I keep saying this in every video, this is one of the reasons I want Intel to be competitive in GPUs as well, because even if nothing else, and they're only good mid-range cards, for example, it's better than us just not having an option at all. And actually keeping on the subject of NVIDIA just for one more moment, I'd like to discuss the RTX 3060, the non-TI variant. This card is going to be launching soon-ish, of course. And it's looking fairly promising. It's kind of weird in specifications with the 12 gigabytes of VRAM, of course, thanks to the 192-bit bus. And there have been a couple of reports that uh, I believe the first report of this was Cal Cutland, to give them credit, I could be wrong on that, but uh, basically it started to just kind of spiral on the internet that we will not be seeing a founder's edition card of the RTX 3060, and I just wanna say that this is 100% true. In fact, I've been told this a while ago, so when I actually first got briefed about the RTX 3060, I did actually think that People knew about this at large, but apparently no, it hadn't been widely reported. But yes, it is true. NVIDIA are going to leave this down to board partners only. So the likes of Zotac, MSI, Asus, whomever else are going to be producing these cards. And there is going to be no FE, no Founders Edition GPU. So what this basically means is, unfortunately, it could hurt the MSRP of the card. Obviously, the one benefit of the Founders Edition is that, well, yeah, you can get a card, admittedly, again, supply has been somewhat limited, but in theory, you can get a GPU, which is actually at the MSRP, the launch price. And as we all know, the tariffs have been absolutely brutal recently, especially for the upper end cards, like we're seeing GPUs now of like, you know, 1100, 1500 US dollars, depending on the pricing tier. Of course, this same issue with the tariffs has also imp uh, impacted, excuse me, motherboards and other components too. So hopefully, you know, pricing will actually start to stabilize. But yeah, in terms of the RTX 3060 anyway, there was definitely no FE card. I've been told this by NVIDIA as well as two AIBs. And next up, NVIDIA have got us covered anyway because they're going to be releasing the GeForce GT 1010. Hmm... Uh, so this card allegedly has 256 CUDA cores with 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. That's the specs that have appeared on Tech Power Up, but while the specs haven't been confirmed, the existence of the card has been confirmed by NVIDIA. So obviously 256 CUDA cores is the technical term, very technical, but it's nothing. 
but obviously this is not a card which is designed to play like control or doom eternal this card has been designed for like small form factor builds if you need to kind of stream or just do light you know video editing or uh, office production work that type of thing and for those tasks it could be good again it's not really an exciting card in and of itself it could be fun to kind of mess around with an overclock for the hell and back but overall yeah this is kind of just a well, <laughs> hi again, Bascal. It's been a while. How are you doing? Despite the fact that we're actually waiting for Intel's Rocket Lake processors to launch, Intel seem to be very keen to remind us that Older Lake will be the successor. In fact, during the CES 2021 conference from Intel, they showed us some stuff regarding Rocket Lake, but they even demoed, somewhat anyway, an Older Lake-based CPU. This is kind of interesting when you think about it. It's almost like they know that Rocket Lake isn't exciting a huge number of people and they're kind of already pressing the fact that they have a successor. Alder Lake is going to be interesting for a few reasons. One, it has radically redesigned cores. We'll get into that in just a moment, along with technologies such as DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5. But, of course, the core layout is causing a lot of controversy. It's got that big slash small design. But we've actually seen a leak now on Sysoft Sandra, and the leak is running at 1.8 gigahertz for the base frequency and 4 gigahertz for the turbo. Credit, by the way, to Momomo for this discovery. So again, it's running with DDR5 memory, and it seems to be hitting 4800 megahertz with DDR5, which is, you know, relatively nippy. Assuming all of this is being detected correctly, it's reporting as 10 times 1.25 MLB of level 2 cache and next of all 30 megabytes of L3 cache so this means in terms of the L3 cache it's actually quite significant it's got 10 megabytes more cache than the 10900k one thing that's actually being definitely reported wrong though is it's showing that it's got 32 threads when in reality we believe it only has 24 basically the big cores handle hyper threading or two threads per core but the small cores do not. They are basically single thread only. So in reality, we believe it's actually 24 threads total rather than the 32 that we're seeing here. Another thing of interest is that this CPU actually is using Intel's XD architecture. It's outfitted with 32 execution units running at 1.5 gigahertz. For those unfamiliar with uh, Intel's iGPUs or GPUs in general, that's 256 shading units. So Alder Lake changes the socket again. Remember, Rocket Lake is still on LGA 1200, whereas this is on LGA 1700. And there are actually a number of changes we're going to be seeing with Golden Cove. These include, but not limited to, improvements in single thread performance, IPC. There's also uh, additional uh, improvement for artificial intelligence, AI, and enhancements in security features, and so on and so on. My concern with Alder Lake is, is it going to be enough? Now, it's probable that by the time Alder Lake releases, which is allegedly going to be the end of this year or early next year, Intel are probably going to be facing off against Zen 3 Refresh, aka Warhol. I don't think Warhol is going to drastically increase the number of cores and threads or anything like that. I'm hearing it's going to be identical. And as for IPC gains, it's a refresh of Zen 3. So I don't think we're going to see like a 15 or 20% IPC gain or anything like that for Warhol. It could be just a small tweak and higher clock frequencies. I think Warhol is probably going to have a small IPC gain, maybe a bit like what we saw with Zen, um, what was it, Zen Plus, I guess, so a couple of percent IPC. The problem is, though, I just don't think Alder Lake is going to be able to compete. For users who don't need a Fred Ripper or HEDT setup, but also need quite a lot of cores, for gaming, Intel will probably be fine, the thing is, though, if you look at it from the gaming perspective, honestly, even if you've got a 9900K or a 3700X, even hell, even a 2700X, you're going to be absolutely fine for gaming for so long because even an RTX 3080 or, a, you know, a R or an RX 6900 XT, it's still going to be the bottleneck in a large number of games. Yes, you're going to see lower minimum frame rates, but is it really going to be that big of a deal to you? My suspicion is that someone with a decent processor and all they do is gaming, they're probably just going to keep what they've got for quite a while. And I seem to be seeing this quite frequently in comments like, yeah, 
Zen 3 is great, but with the shortages, I'm just going to wait. So yeah, can Intel compete? I think that Golden Cove slash Alder Lake and you know, subsequent architectures are going to do a decent job. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. And it really comes down to how the OS as well as applications themselves benefit from this big slash small design. With that said though, thank you very much for checking out the video. The normal stuff, if you have enjoyed it, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.